Hi, my name is Shai Schmelzer from the Oracle Visual Builder Cloud Service Team. And in this demonstration, we're going to show you how to work with string translation and switching locales in your Visual Builder application. Let's look a little bit at some of the translation features that you have in Visual Builder Cloud Service. So we have here an application. It's a pretty simple one. And we're going to show you that, for example, when you look at a table, okay, and you look at the data, you can see the columns. And for each column, you can see the details. And over here is the header of the column, right? So if, for example, you would update this, it would be reflected here, okay? So usually what you want to do is instead of having hard-coded values here, you want to click on this little globe icon here, which makes this string into a translatable thing, okay? You can give a description, So this would be a description of the string, and this is the key that it's going to be created with. Okay, and you can also modify this. So let's call this one the cost key. Right. So now this string is no longer inside here in the properties, but rather you'll see here that we're referencing the application translation and the specific key. So to find out this file, if you now look inside your application, or inside our web application, under resources, there's a section for strings, okay? And over here, you would find an AppStrings JSON file. And if you look at this, this is exactly where you can find the definition of the strings that you externalize. So you have a central file where all your strings are. And now you can take this file and modify it and create um, other versions of it in other languages. And one way of doing it is actually to go over to your application settings and look under translation. Over here you can download all the strings or just the ones that have been changed into your machine. Okay, so I downloaded a file. It would now be inside my download directory. And if I double click on it and extract it, you will see here is the file. And you can also open the file for editing. Okay, it's a simple text file, an ARB file. Now, if I wanted to translate this into other languages, I could. Okay, so um, for example, if I would translate it to France, so picture would be a photo, name would be nom, two can be n, and cost can be pre. Okay. So I just translated the file, and I'm going to save it with dash and the two-letter code for the language, FR in our case, if we're doing French. All right, so now we have those two files, and they are inside our directory. So we can now zip this again, and we can then upload the changed file. And you can now see that I have a new directory here called fr with the translated strings in here. Okay. In addition, in the upstrings JSON, you would now see, in addition to our root, we now have an fr entry. Nice. Um, in order to um, make the translation appear, we need to do one more thing. And um, to do that, you're going to go into the source view of your application, okay, and you'll find that under the app flow JSON, which is the file that defines your whole application, you can add another entry for localization. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this one, this line. put it here. 
and then you're basically defining a localization section with a locale and the default one. Okay, um, you can see here that I'm doing two things. One of them is I'm actually accessing a local storage on my window machine and I'm picking up a variable with this name. Okay, uh, This doesn't exist, you need to create this variable. Uh, the other option is you can also hard code a value here. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm saying either this or the default which is EN English. So now we need to put in a bit of code that would actually create this variable, for example. And again, this variable is just one approach that you can take. Um, it stores the default language in your machine. Okay. So let's go back to our page. Okay. And we're going to add uh, in our page a new function, a JavaScript function. Again, I'm going to copy the code for this function and you can find it in the related blog. And over here you can see what we're doing is we have a new function called set app language that accepts a parameter which is the local. Okay. And then goes over and sets the variable, same name that we used before, to this value. Okay, so this is again using simple JavaScript to set a variable on our local machine. Now we need to invoke this method in some way. So again, if we go back into our application over here, we can add, for example, a couple of links. Okay, And usually you would probably want to do it as a menu or probably on your login page or something like that. But for our case, I'm just going to add two links here. Okay, um, We'll call this one um, call this one English and then we'll add another link below this one and set it to say French okay now we need to define what the link would do so we can have an event this is the English one so we'll do a click event and what we'll do here is we'll call our module function so this is the function the JavaScript function we just defined and this function ex expects a parameter, and we're going to map this parameter, in this case to be EN for English. Okay. Once we set this variable, we need to actually reload our application with this variable. So the variable would be read in our application JSON file. So to do that, we're going to do a navigate to URL and navigate to the index HTML page. And if you are not familiar, this is this page. This is the page that controls your whole application look and feel. Okay? And layout, basically. Alright, so we have one uh, function written. Let's go back. We need to do the same thing for the French button. Okay, so again, add an event, a click event, and we're going to call our module function. And this time, the parameter we're going to set it to fr and again navigate to our index html All right um so now we're ready to run our little application So again, by default, we are showing English, you can see by the titles here. And let's see what happens when I click French. Okay, we're reloading the page. And you can see, titles are now in French. Okay. Not only are the titles in French, if you go and navigate actually to an edit page, okay, and you'll open, for example, this little date, you would see that the month here is February, and basically it's in French, or aujourd'hui, if we want to go to today's date. And again, if we go over and click the English button, we would reload the application now with the variable set to EN, and our titles are back to English, and if we go again into the record to edit it, it shows English. <laughs> 